Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will create a birch tree. We will create it using the already built-in add-on for generating sampling three trees. Let's get started. First of all, let's make sure that we have this palette turned on. Let's go to Preference, Edens, Tab All, click, Select Ed Curve. And here we look so that we have a tick here, Ed Curve Sampling 3 Gen. All of us have this check mark activated, and now we can proceed to work. I press the Ed button, here I select Curve and Sample 3 Gen. Let's move a little closer to this tree. I will mark another cavity point, so that our tree with shadows and micro shadows can be drawn better. Let's see what settings we have. Here we unfold the bundle. If for some reason, this bundle is not displayed, press the F9 key. There, in principle, the same settings are hidden in a separate window for you. First of all, we set our preset. Lot preset press light beach, that is, white birch, select this reset. We see our birch has been added, and now we see that it has three trunks. We need to make one barrel for our purposes. I select the strum splitting tab, and here I set the base split to zero. That's it. Now we have a tree with one main trunk. There is already a retreat there, but it doesn't matter. If it bothers you too, you can remove it, just set the splice segment completely to zero. From 0.35, completely to zero. But I'll leave it like that, I basically like it that way. The next thing we can do is go to the geometer folder. There is a shape here, a custom shape, this is what we have by default. Here we can change the variation of the distribution of our branches, as it were, into what form they will take. In other words, we can choose cylinders for ourselves. I don't know from the farms, but it all depends on the tasks that you have set for yourself. In our case, we will simply leave everything by default, as it were, at a large different price here. The next thing we really need to do is switch to the Gossip brand again, and here we see the first point, this is Levels. What is he responsible for? Responsible for the levels of branches. Let's see how it works. That is, the first level of branches, this means the trunk itself, that is, everything that already departs from it. This will already be another level. That is, the first level is our trunk. The second level is already the branches that go from the trunk. We need to add another third level. We add the third level, and we have small branches, on which the leaves will grow directly. We can add a fourth one, but I usually don't add it, because the scene starts to overload with polygons. All of these settings they work in the same order. In other words, we see that there are four levels here. That is, the first level is responsible for the branches on the trunk, the second level is branches from the trunk, and the third is smaller than the branches, the fourth, respectively, even smaller branches. In principle, we will finish with the settings of the tree itself for now, we will move on to the leaves. Then we will return to this point, but for now we are moving to the leaves, show the foxes that our leaves have changed. We see that we have leaves of this shape. In principle, you can leave them like that. Mixgonal. You can put them on a rectangle, but I'll leave them in this position. Uh, 
We cannot increase their number. It's worth 16 here. Let's put 70. We see that we have added leaves. There are much more of them. But it is clear that the leaves are beginning to layer one on another leaf. That is, there are too many of them, and they are trying to fit on our twigs, but there are clearly not enough branches. Therefore, we return to the strum of the weave, and here it turns out that we have the third level, that is, the strum is responsible for the number of branches. We move, we see that there is 30 here, we remove, and also put up somewhere 70, 80, so that we have more of these twigs generated. We are waiting for some time, because he needs to recount everything. Here we see our tree has already become more dense, more saturated with these branches. I'll probably even put a hundred, try it, see what happens, if we don't like it, we'll return it back. We see what result we got. But we remember that now the tree may seem quite thick, but when we add leaves with alpha channel C, of course it will not look so thick on the render. So maybe we'll go to the leaves tab and add another, I don't know, at least 80. Let's put the number leaves to increase their volume. In parallel, we can look at how the number of polygons in our price increases. Now we have 300. There were 370. Now there are 406,000 polygons. I see it here at the bottom. You can also see the same data if you open this bundle, and there is a statistics button here. And here it writes how many faces, that is, polygons. In principle, I consider this result satisfactory, and we will proceed to the configuration of the materials themselves. I'm turning down our window. Yes, by the way, if, I repeat, if you accidentally took somewhere clicked, highlighted something wrong, and you lost this bundle, press the F9 key, you will have it again, you can continue to edit your tree here. Of course, if you already start editing another object there to model, and then come back and click again at 9, then you will not have anything. That is, it is, well, directly as if you have not taken any more particularly such, well, serious actions, in relation to other objects. OK, go to the shading tab. Not even in shading, but Adiki. We need to set up our C-scans. Choosing our leaves, Edith Maud. We see what kind of scan we have. Let's add the material, the mod will come back. I'll add the material. Here I will add an image of Techers, open, and I will choose the leaves that I have on my hard disk. I will attach this sheet in the description to the video. You can also download it there and use it in your work. I open this image. That's how it looks, it's like a birch leaf, and now our Edith mod is moving on. We see how our Juve scan is being stretched right now. Now let's go to viewing materials. We look. Here we have a leaf coming from a branch, right? We see that we have it completely incorrectly oriented, that is, in relation to the branch. That is, he does not look at it with a stalk, he looks at it with the tip of a leaf. Come on. 
The computer starts to slow down because there are a lot of leaves. Let's highlight ours and the scan by pressing the Hey key. Press P180, that is, P rotation on the children's keyboard, 180 degrees, in order to fully expand, as it were. Now we scale C scale, that is X, and we will stretch until we have a sheet that does not fit in these pores. Even I will reduce it a little now. That's it. We can choose this vertex and pull it here. That is, to adjust so that our leaves fall completely. We select this one and expose it like this. We see that now our leaves are growing correctly. We have achieved all this, switch back to object mode, select our tree, and see that it is now created as a curve. We need to convert it. Right whale with the mouse, envelope 2, mash select. That's it, now we have our object. Again, a certain uni scan is generated for it. I create a material, add an image tecker, remove the tree, and here I will choose such a birch material. I will also attach it in the description to the video. Let's turn on the materials viewing mode to see how it is displayed here. It is now displayed terribly, that is, our texture is completely stretched, it is still incorrectly oriented. You are again in the editor's office. I press the Hey key to highlight all the scans completely, press P90. Let's see where our texture is oriented, and let's first scale with Y. I want to see where we had it oriented, correctly or not. Most likely it was oriented correctly. Let's go back, it's crawling there, click, try to scale with a fix. After all, it was wrong to return P90. Let's reduce our stretching with X, scale it up. With Y. Yes, the whole difficulty here is to see exactly where our texture is oriented. It has to be rotated like this, scaled many times, to see how we have it correctly or incorrectly oriented. Here I have already approximately achieved the desired result, that is, we can scale it even more. Of course, as in this add-on, I don't really like the Juve scan being created somehow. It is much better created, I already had a video palette M3 on the channel. There is generally a cool Juve scan created for small branches, and for large ones, and for the trunk. And here, of course, it is created poorly, and you have to edit it for a long time. That's how to play, scale. Of course, in this respect, this built-in blender Don is not very convenient by default. But nevertheless, it's not such a problem. It is possible, it is possible to configure, it is possible to do well. It's just that you need to devote some amount of time to this. There you go.
And yes, let's set up our leaves again. We see that now they are with a black kayak in the corners. To do this, we go to the shading folder and this added texture, alpha output from it, pull it to alpha, connect it. And in the foot of the materials, we scroll through our materials at the very bottom, and here we have settings. A blend mod according to the pack. We exhibit alpha, alpha husky or whatever. Here the black oilcloth is gone, and here our leaves are completely ready. Now let's go to the big screen. We can change some kind of HD paradise map, put another one more interesting, maybe so that we have shadows. Here we see how our birch tree is. In principle, the same birch can be used in some of our architectural visualization. What do you need there for? Of course, for a computer game, 406,000 polygons is a pretty heavy tree. 4 this, of course, optimization is already worth it. You can write in the comments whether it is necessary to create a video in which trees for computer games are optimized to create. If you are interested, write in the comments. But this is the end of the creation of this tree. Thank you all for watching. If this video helped you and liked it, then like it, subscribe to the channel, and bye to everyone.